Hello, I'm talking today with Dr. Ryan Farley. Uh, Ryan is one of my faculty colleagues here in the Department of Finance at the University of Tennessee. And uh, Ryan's official title is a program director of our TORCH funds. Um, and, and so let, let's just start out. Uh, Ryan, first of all, welcome. Thank you for chatting with us today. How's it going? Nice to be here. Uh, it's uh, it's it's going uh, quite well. Um, Join my uh, home office, my studio in my basement, uh, which is where I pretty much live these days. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, so so Ryan, uh, just first off, um, the the torch funds. Um, this is uh, this is something that I, I would imagine that um, most folks who are watching this aren't even familiar with. So, um, could 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 you tell us what uh, the torch funds? are sure so uh the torch fund program is a student managed investment fund program uh so sort of simply put we have students in charge of real portfolios with real cash and real securities and they're making real decisions on what to buy and what to sell in these portfolios uh, there there are student managed investment funds in a number of different universities here at the University of Tennessee, uh, I believe ours started up at some point in the 1990s, uh, at, at which point it was a lot more rare. But it's it's a really unique opportunity for students to take what they've learned in the classroom and see if they can apply it to asset management in, in real life scenarios with real outcomes. And so just as a frame of reference, uh, how, much, how much money are we talking about here? So. Currently, we're, we're managing about $3.3 million uh, in assets, and that's across four different portfolios. Uh, each portfolio has its own team of students. Okay, and then, and then how, many, how many students are involved in, in say, a, a single management team? Um, so it all depends on what, what I get in terms of applicants. Um, we, we've had anywhere from maybe three students on a team to, to 10 students on a team. This semester, uh, I'm working with, I think most of the funds are somewhere between seven or eight students on each one of those portfolios. Okay, so um, yeah, so I, I think this is a great opportunity. Um, I, I know in a lot of, um, a lot of investment classes in, in various universities, students will start the semester and just have kind of this, this uh, funny money account and where they're um, logging into some service and they're creating a fictitious uh, investment portfolio and they're tracking it. Um, and, and so uh, this is kind of like that, <laughs> but uh, clearly the, uh, the, the stakes are, the stakes are a bit higher. I mean, you've got, you know, six to, six to 10 students managing half a million or a million dollars in a pot of money. And, and so, so ultimately the, uh, the students are the ones who are actually responsible for all the, the investment decisions. Is that correct? So the students are making the investment decisions. Um, the students are also able to, uh, able to decide what is the, the voting criteria when, when we vote on a student proposal, whether that's a purchase or a liquidation. Uh, ultimately, I, I have veto power uh, to sort of make sure that, that this thing doesn't run off the rails, but you hit the nail on the head. Capital preservation becomes very real when you're, you're working with real money. And if, if we lose the money in the portfolio, um, th there's not going to be a new check in the mail. That's kind of the end of the program. So, so uh, the stakes are definitely real here. Yeah, so um, and, and we talk about in, in finance a lot, uh, we talk about an agency relationship where you've got someone making the decisions and then someone else who's sort of the, uh, the beneficial owner. And so here, uh, the student, the students are, they don't own the money, correct? Uh, so, so who's, so, so they are agents, they are working on behalf of someone else who has a vested interest. And so so who, uh, who is that? Who's, whose money is this that the students are managing? Yeah, so each, each fund is named after the donor that uh, provided the funds to start up these portfolios. Uh, another concept that we talk about in finance is fiduciary responsibilities. So my, myself and all the students that are participating have fiduciary responsibilities to the donors that provided the funds for these portfolios. 
uh, as well as the university, which the funds that are endowed are, are uh, legally owned by UT. And so uh, the, the, the money, so for those funds then the money that is, that is made um, through these, these, uh, these portfolios, what, what happens to that? Um, well, well, generally the money that's made in the portfolios um, grows the size of those portfolios. Uh, and, and we also use some of those funds to provide scholarship opportunities uh, for students, for instance, um, Recently, a number of students uh, participate in a valuation course that was provided by a third party vendor. And so some of that funding came out of gains made by the portfolios, um, potentially some some travel opportunities to conferences and these sorts of things. Um, but but for the most part, that money is, is sort of growing within the portfolios themselves. So um, then I guess it's, uh, so is it, is it appropriate to think of this as sort of like, uh, almost like an internship for the students where they're, they're sort of um, doing uh, basically asset management as juniors and seniors in college um, as they would if this was, if, if this was a career, is that, is that fair? So I, I think, I think there's a lot of elements that are sort of like an internship, but I might, I might liken it a little bit more to an apprenticeship. So uh, I, for instance, I have yet to ask anyone to pick up my dry cleaning or uh, get me a cup of coffee. Um, you know, the students are not doing clerical tasks in the hopes of getting opportunities that are what they really want to be doing. From, from the moment they walk into the door at that first class meeting, these students own somewhere between a quarter million dollars to uh, uh, one and a half million dollars worth of cash and securities. So from that first moment, they're responsible for the holdings in that portfolio, and they're expected to actively go out and search for new investment opportunities. Uh, and, and in an internship, typically, I would think that it would take a considerable amount of time before you had that sort of level of responsibility. Outstanding opportunity. Um, now, uh, I want to shift gears just a little bit uh, and talk uh, about some of the things that you've seen in the past and kind of what you're seeing now. Um, so uh, I know we've talked a, a bit about your background and uh, you had uh, about a 10 year career before getting your PhD, you had about a 10 year career in, uh, in, in, in some of the big Wall Street trading firms. Um, and in, in that career, um, you saw uh, basically the financial markets from a very specific vantage point. Um, and now as uh, director of the, the, the torch funds, you see the same thing from a very different angle. Um, could, you, could you talk a little bit about that so that um, our, our viewers have an understanding of what those, the, those two angles are? Sure, the, and, and this is sort of part of what makes, uh, what makes running the torch funds so exciting for me. My, my career was uh, a little over a decade in institutional trading. And so what, what we did in those firms was we focused on how best to trade and, and implement the investment decisions of asset managers. So uh, mutual funds, pension plans, hedge funds, when they decide to buy and sell securities, they need to buy and sell those securities through a broker. Uh, sort of like the way you might use E-Trade to trade for, for your personal account. Um, if, we're, if we're talking about BlackRock, maybe their broker is Deutsche Bank uh, or, or Morgan Stanley. So what we would do was not decide what to buy or what to sell, but rather how to buy and sell those orders uh, and when uh, to get the to really get the best possible return for the clients to make sure that um, when they have an idea, an investment idea, that, that implementing that investment idea doesn't erode away those returns. Um, in Torch, now my, my viewpoint is sort of on the asset management side where my focus is on helping the students to develop ideas on what to buy and, and what to sell. Um, and so the, the, the considerations are totally different. And on the trading side, you know, there's a lot of focus on market structure uh, and timing and, and what else might be going on in the trading markets in that moment. Whereas 
on the asset management side, the focus is much more on things like the macro economy, uh, business fundamentals, what the competitive environments are in different industries. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're, they're sort of two sides of the same coin. So then um, just to, to, to offer a very tangible example, then uh, we could say that the, the asset management side would be dealing with uh, decisions like whether or not to buy 10,000 shares of Apple or Facebook. And then uh, the, the trading side would be, uh, okay, so you've got someone who wants to buy 10,000 shares of Apple or Facebook. You've got to figure out how to get the deal done because there's so many different ways um, in, in modern financial markets uh, to make that happen. Um, so uh, I certainly uh, want to uh, have you back and, and do a conversation about um, the, the trading process, because I think that's a really exciting, uh, exciting thing. And it's uh, there have been so many changes in the last 10 to 20 years. And so you've been right in the middle of those. And so I think I think a lot of our our viewers would really uh, enjoy uh, hearing that.